Today I have four beautiful spring DIYs. Keep watching. I'm Brandy and this is Making It My Own DIYs. We're going to start off with a Dollar Tree placemat. And then I have two printouts and I've got the links in the description box below for you of bees and honey. These are the two white 8x10 frames from Dollar Tree. Start by taking off the backing and the paper that's on the inside. You can leave the glass in. And we're going to use the back of this just to show you that you can get two backings from this. We're going to fold it in half. I creased it with my finger. Now I'm going to use my little Cricut tool and just press it down. This is going to make a nice little seam and a line so we can cut it right down the middle. Get some good sharp scissors and cut right through it. Now this is not fabric, it's plastic. Just cut through there. And then I'm going to use my rotary tool to trim it down to make it the same size as the backing. Alright, I'm going to use hot glue. You can use a couple of dots here or straight lines, whatever you choose to put this down. Now when I put this down, it didn't even cross my mind that this is like a mesh and then it would stick out. But you see how it comes out the top? You can rub that glue right off and it just completely disappears. It just becomes part of that mesh underneath and goes away. So you can see it just beads up. Just roll it with your finger and it'll come right off. But don't do that when it's super hot unless you get finger protectors on. You don't want to lose your fingerprints. Just comes off real easy. Okay, now it's invisible. You can barely even tell it was there. And it is securely on the backing of our frame. Now I'm going to take my two signs. I'm going to take the first one and you're going to try to aim for about a five by seven um, when you get done. That way you have plenty of border showing around the outside. I'm just kind of eyeballing it. I really didn't do like exact measurements. And then you can just use your top, your first picture to help measure your second picture. Now I'm just trying to figure out my center and I'm just going to stick it down with some double stick tape. Simple, simple. Mod Podge would probably be too big of a mess here and this tape holds it beautifully where you have no wrinkles, no smudging, no smearing, or any other type of problem. And I did use an inkjet printer to print off these beautiful little printables. Y'all need to look at my Pinterest too because I have lots of free printables over there. Um, they're from other people. I didn't make the printables, but I am sharing them. So you can go to my Pinterest. You can find all those um, links in the description box below. So I'm going to put the back back on it and look how perfect that is. Isn't that beautiful? It's like a double matted framed picture. So pretty. So I'm just running you back through how we do this with the second one. Same thing, trim it down. Doesn't have to be exact. And the good thing about these lines is you can kind of eyeball it to make sure that everything is lined up like it should be. Nice and straight. But you can use any type of backing that you like. I thought that this black and white was beautiful with the bee prints. Isn't that gorgeous? So cute. Moving on to the next one. We're going to use one of these stacked book little decorations from a Dollar Tree. They're not put together very well, but you know, you can fix that if you want. Or you can take the attitude that I had and nobody's going to look at the bottom or back. So you can just leave it alone. I took the little sad ribbon off, but we are going to use it. And then I've got some more beautiful ribbon from Dollar Tree. Love the blue ribbon, I mean the bee ribbon, the honeycomb, and then the gold I already had. That came from the thrift store, I believe. I'm using some plaster chalk paint, but you can use whatever color you like. I think the white's going to be pretty here. And then these little dippers, these little spoons that I got from Goodwill. And then these gorgeous yellow flowers, just because they coordinate. You can use whatever color you like. I'm trying to stick with my theme of black, yellow, gold, white, you know, for bees. And I think it's a beautiful transition from coming out of winter and attempting to have some type of a spring weather. I live in the south, so we get spring early here. We get a very short winter. So if you live in the south, this type of thing might be right up your alley. Or if you live up north and you're cold, this ought to warm you right up. So I'm just going to paint this, all the surfaces that I'll see, and I'm going to use the back part 
of this beautiful calendar from Dollar Tree and trim it down. You know, there's little bitty ones and there's a larger one that's in the corner. I'm just using my little trimmer here. I've got something close to it in my Amazon store. You can find that link in the description box <laughs> if you are looking for something like this. Not the exact one, but something similar. I'm going to use my glue stick here to put this down on the box or the books, whichever one you want to call it. And you can stick this down any way you want. Use your double stick tape if that's what you have. Use your Mod Podge if that's what you have. This works fine for me. I'm just going to kind of pat it down with my hands in the spot that I lower than the middle because I want to put something on the top. And then I'm just using my brayer to press it down, but you can use whatever you want to make sure that it is firmly affixed to your surface. Now I have these manicure scissors that I use all the time in crafting for my little fussy cutting, and I'm gonna just use it to go down the centers where the separations in the books would be. Just to give it a little depth so that you can see that brown through there, it gives it a little shadow and makes it appear more like books stacked on top of one another. You certainly don't have to do that, and if you just barely put any on, like I did on this end, then you wouldn't have to work so hard like I'm doing now. Hindsight, right? <laughs> All right, so we're gonna take this spoon, and we're going to put some hot glue in it. Now, if you have yellow glue sticks or gold glue sticks, you could definitely use that, but I don't, so I'm gonna make do with what I have. I'm gonna add a big spoon full of what is going to be our honey, on here and I'm going to hold it upright so that it will form a drip and you can see here that it's starting to drip I have sped it up a little bit but it's starting to drip watch your fingers it's hot let it drip down a little bit give it a second to to kind of firm up and then sit it down let it dry the rest of the way and look at that perfect now we're going to go on to our book while that is sitting up and I'm just taking the side of a lid of a pencil and going across dragging it across the edge of the books to make it look like pages. Make it a little more realistic, I think. And then the same thing on this side, just drag it across back and forth. And then after you've gotten that done, you can just take your fingers or the side of your hand and just smear it just a little bit. And you see, it kind of looks like pages, right? Now, I'm attempting to make a glaze here. I'm using some gloss Mod Podge and some King's Gold. I'm gonna shake them up. I'm gonna use more of that Mod Podge and just a little bit of that really strongly pigmented gold there. I'm gonna mix it up. You can add some brown to it to make it look more like a, the brown of honey, whichever one you wanna do. But this was an experiment for me, so I think in the end it turned out good. Mix it up really well, and then I'm gonna use a fine little tip brush here to go just along all around where that hot glue is. I'm not coloring my spoon with it because I want this to look like, to some extent, it should represent honey, right? It takes a few coats so that you don't have brush marks in here anymore, but be sure that you let it dry nicely between each coat. Then I'm going to, while it's drying, work on decorating the book stack. So the binders of the books need a little something. And rather than writing, I thought it would be nice to just use some decorations on the spines of the books. So that's what I'm doing here. No words, just decorations. I'm using double stick tape and then a length of my ribbon to go on the top. And I'm just gonna kind of alternate. I'm gonna use the honeycomb on the top and then the next layer will be the bees. And there's definitely a pattern to these bees, upright and upside down, so just be, you might wanna be mindful of that if in the end you find out that you put your bees on upside down after you've completed your work and then your heart is broken. Okay, so now we're down to the last layer and this is how it's gonna look and I, and I like it so far. Sometimes, you know, you just gotta keep going on something when you kind of hesitate, just keep going with it and see what happens. I mean, it's crafting. We make mistakes and we can fix things easily. So if the edges hanging over a little bit bother you, just take a little bit of your stick glue, rub it on there and then press it down and hold it for a second and it will cup under for you. So now the same two ribbons that I used before, I'm going to cut the same length and we're gonna use that to go around the top of our box. 
and I think I have about 18 inches of ribbon in this. I think that's what it is. And I still have some ribbon left over, so I'm glad of that because I really, really like this. Now I'm fiddling around here to try to decide what type of a knot I want or how I want this ribbon to lay. So I've just decided to double knot the gold over the top of the, the little bee ribbon. And you can just twist those. If they won't lay right, use a little, little dab of glue and then it, it'll stay just, you know, where you put it. But I like it right around the top. And I'm just going to slant cut these ribbons. I can't imagine trying to take the time to dovetail these. They're just, they're small ribbons. I don't think it's necessary. But you do whatever your little heart desires. Now, those little tails are staying exactly where I put them. And I'm going to add a flower because you've got to have flowers there, right? For bees. I could have used the little same flowers as on the box, but I just decided to use the roses. And you can see this is an example of how they turn out when you've had several layers of paint. I think it looks like it has a little honey on it, maybe mustard. Okay, so I'm just going to divide the bottom just a little bit so we can see both colors. I think it gives a nice little touch. And I've just tucked that honey spoon right underneath the knot. Look at it from all your little angles and decide what else you need. I wanted to trim this stem a little bit. And then make a few more little additions. You could also use something like a, if you had like a little, a jeweled bee, or if you had a button with the bee on it, that would be really precious here if you wanted to try that. I'm just going to use the head off of one of the other little roses, and I'm going to tuck that right under that knot, and it will also help hold that spoon handle in place. So now, now they're all secure. What do you think about it? I really like this one. So cute, and I've never done a book stack before as a project, so this is my first time. What do you think? I think it looks pretty good. For the next one, I'm going to use one of these little printouts. I will link the video below where I made these. I'm going to use some glossy Mod Podge. I'm going to use some foam, a little watering can, some of these little flowers, and some greenery. Use whatever you like. So this is printed on tissue paper. All you have to do is just cut this out. You don't have to cut it real close because you're not going to see that because the backing is white and so is the can. I'm going to add my Mod Podge down in the area that I will be adding my little beehive or my skip, whichever one this is, since it has a little door on it. Whoops. Okay. Now I'm going to gently press this in place. This is tissue paper, so keep in mind it is fragile. You don't want to be too rough with this. And then I'm going to help lay my edges down in the, the um, Mod Podge that's already there by just taking that same brush and just going over the top. Now you can see that I'm taking this flat brush and tapping it into the cracks in the, the details in that can. I like to do this because this makes it look more like it is hand painted. And then same thing here. If you need to add a little more Mod Podge, just add it on there. You could use school glue also if you would like, but I'm not sure that it has a glossy finish. And like I said, the can has an enamel look, so I want this to kind of blend in. And this is how it looks. Look, my baby cane. He wanted to put his hand in there, so he's giving me some love. Gotta stop for the love, right? All right, a little more Mod Podge on there after it dries, just to keep everything secure and make sure everything is blended in nicely. I love this. These are so sweet. I mean, not if you get stung, but really, if you if you think about their sense of community and, and the way they protect one another, it's just a beautiful thing. There you go. Be sure to follow me on my social media, on Pinterest, Instagram, and Twitter. All right, so now all you have to do is start adding in your florals. I lost a piece of my footage. I don't know what happened. Can't find it. The camera ate it. So I'll tell you what I did briefly. If you imagine a star shape, right in the center of that star is where I pl placed my tallest greenery pick. 
And then I made points out from that with greenery. And then working my way upward, I added in my little flower picks. And I did that all the way around. And now what you're seeing me do is just going back in there with the extra little pieces and adding those in. You know how I do this. I use pretty much the same te technique every time. And I have lots of videos where I do floral arrangements and things like that. So be sure you go, you know, check those out. Go to my videos and find the ones that have floral, floral arranging. And you can find some, some details, some better details on that. Again, I'm sorry about that. It, it's just gone. I don't know. It's gone. But now I'm just filling it out. Um, one thing I always do is turn my project from side to side. Um, you could use a turntable if that's helpful to do that. And just go round and round. Make sure you don't have any foam showing. Make sure everything is balanced and pretty. And I love the look of this white and green. It's so simple and cottagey to me. And I think it's just beautiful for springtime. Very simple and pretty and you can use any type of greenery you have you can use thrifted stuff you can pull it off of other things that you have and use it again I mean repurpose your things really stretch your dollar okay now I'm gonna take three pieces of jute and these are about two feet long these stretches these pieces I get my jute from the Dollar Tree but I do thrift it when I see it I pick it up because I use it a lot and I'm going to pull it up here around right under the lip. And I'm going to give it a tie. And then you can keep your things from slipping around if you just use a little bit of hot glue under the knot. It won't slide down, especially when you have those cans that you get from Dollar Tree. Those little planters that are silver with the rope on them. They taper downward. So if you tie anything around the top, it's going to fall unless you add a little glue. So just keep that in mind. I'm just tying a very simple bow here and I'm going to trim off my ends for a little extra embellishment on the top. And now I'm going to add my other honey spoon. Hot glue. I'm going to place it kind of behind the bow and then pull my bow up and then separate those little layers of the strings. This adds that little rustic touch that I love to my cottage pieces. And I think it is just adorable. What do you think? Is this something you might try? If you can't find the exact thing, you can always find something similar. This shouldn't even be a DIY, but I did do it myself, so I guess it qualifies. So these little candles came from Dollar Tree. I grabbed them knowing I could use them for these bee projects. Take a little piece of ribbon and go around the neck of each one of these. On this one, I'm going to use the gold, and I'm going to use that black and white that I already had. How about that? I'm going to wrap this one around, and I'm going to tie it very simply. You can use a dot of glue to hold that there in place if you need to, and then tie a double knot. I'm going to tuck underneath a little piece of greenery. You can go ahead and use the same that you used in the the planter or the um, the watering can if that's what you want to do but I thought this yellow would be really pretty with this gold ribbon so I just went ahead and used it it's just a scrap I keep all my little scraps and baskets and bowls and I just use them again and I'm just tying two bows one on top of the other one because they're so small I couldn't tie them all at once so I just tied them one on top of the other and they're overlapping see how that's sticking out all you got to do is use a little drop of hot glue under the end and it'll glue straight down. Look at that. And there's the third one. I want you to try these projects. I believe in you. I know that you can do it. I've got lots of crafty people in my community, and I'm getting so much wonderful feedback about inspiration, that you're feeling inspired, that you're crafting. Maybe you haven't crafted in a while, and you're dragging your stuff back out, and you're getting back into it. There's something to me so relaxing and joyous about crafting and be in just being expressive through your own crafting you don't have to be just like anybody else you don't have to do just like everybody else if you're enjoying the content please consider subscribing i promise you will not regret it thank you so much for stopping by i appreciate every single one of you and i'll see you again soon bye